Hi, and welcome to today's Tuesday Tip. I have joining me today a guest. She's really not a guest. She's our backbone in our voucher department. We have our lead accountant, Deanna Baker. Hello. Today's Tuesday Tip will talk about something that I hope you aren't doing, and if you are, we're here to warn you. As you know, the series has had me out in the field doing MORs so I could bring you firsthand information. Well, during one of my MORs recently, I ran into a management company that had three, not one, but three five nines that were in the files and they had no signature by the resident. And it really bothered me a bit, so I came back to ask Deanna about it. So this is what we're going to cover. We're going to cover the reason you need the five nines signed and in the file. And this is going to be a two-part series. The second part, we'll talk about extenuating circumstances and what HUD says that you must do or document if you have extenuating circumstances, the reason you couldn't get a signature on your 50059. So let's get started. Deanna, uh, I was out on property, ran into this file. There were three five nines that were not signed. There was um, two ARs and one move in. So I called your department and talked to one of your account specialists and I asked them, do we have any extenuating circumstances on this? And the uh, counter told me, no, Miss Vicki, uh, it seems that they didn't turn in an extenuating circumstance code and their software that they submitted with the voucher says that the 5-9 was signed on, I'm going to say 8-2. Well, I was out there on 9-2 and it wasn't signed. So I think that a lot of our viewers need to be reminded the importance of getting a 5-9 sign. And I just want you to look at chapter five, paragraph 531 and F. In F it tells you in all cases, the computer generated HUD 50059 must include required tenant signatures and owner signatures prior to submitting the data to the contract administrator. So you need to make sure that the five nines are signed and dated by both the owner agent and resident before you submit them to Deanna. Now what are your thoughts on that? I agree completely. Um, we are going to look at the Mac User's Guide Chapter 7 because it reiterates exactly what the 4350 Chapter 5, five um, says. And in Chapter 7, you're going to find it in several places. Um, first is 7.5 where it talks about the owner's submission requirements. And it tells you in um, Paragraph 4B that the owner must sign and obtain the signature of the head, spouse, co-head, and all adult adult family members on that 50059 or the 50059A. That's a requirement. If you read further, it tells you that you have to certify that information and put the dates, the signature dates on there prior to transmitting them to us, your CA or your TCA. Um, that's a requirement. If there is no signature on the 59, basically that says it's not valid. Uh, the tenant has not signed it to say that this is correct, this is what we verified, you know, this is the correct information. Um, you should not submit a certification that has not been signed. I think what you found on property is what we have been told because my group doesn't see it from the property side. We've never been able to see that software work. And we don't have to submit paper vouchers anymore no. for you all to verify signatures. No. But, but what's probably happened is there was a signature date placed on that certification in the software. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that it should be able to transmit through because the software should reject it if there's no signature date there. It okay. is a requirement for us to be able to pay that certification. So what you're kind of telling me is that this particular manager sent or fibbed about a date in order to get paid. Now to me that constitutes fraud because the 5-9 itself says that if it if there are no signatures, it shouldn't be transmitted and it shouldn't be paid. Correct. Okay. If, if 
even a site manager knowingly puts a date in their software, knowing the actual 5-9 has not been side, signed, that would be fraudulent in my opinion. Okay. Um, maybe, you know, it's a centralized billing and someone else does the certifications and they just assumed it was missing and plugged it in not knowing. But yes, if there's a date listed and you don't have an actual signed 5-9 in the file like you found, then it's an issue.